Revelation 11, please. Revelation oh, chapter 11. Oh, Pastor, what is this going to be? Revelation 11. So some of you already know the answer to this one, but there are some people online who don't know the answer to this one, actually. So uh, let me uh, erase the board a little bit more because it's kind of dark here. <laughs> but anyways, Revelation 11, the people are wondering who are the two witnesses. So I've been getting questions on those, and uh, I would refer them to a certain video link, but it's not solely on the two witnesses. So I will do them justice by doing a video on that one. Some of you might not know it too, so it's possible. So I'm going to teach to you who are the two witnesses in Revelation. What these two witnesses are is that they will face the Antichrist in the tribulation, and they have great power, and they're going to bring a revival during the tribulations. We will read verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as as they will. So you notice right here that these two witnesses are extremely powerful people. These two witnesses are known, oh, this is just confusing, let me just write here two. These two witnesses from Revelation chapter 11, they have the power to shut, uh, to shut up rain in the heavens. They also have the power to turn water into blood. Now, as I write these descriptions down, I want you to pay attention to these descriptions. When you look at these descriptions, you can easily guess who the two witnesses are then. That's a big giveaway. It's a big giveaway. All right? It's like when I cover two particular members in my church, okay? And if I told you people online, people in this church, okay, that... I, we have two speakers in our church. One of them, he wears glasses and he has black short hair. He's kind of timid, but he's very nice. And then there's the other guy who, there's another guy, you know, there's another guy who has a beard. And then uh, he's very passionate when he preaches. He's got blue eyes. Now, it shouldn't be hard to figure out after that, right? <laughs> All right. We'll just leave it like that. <laughs> we'll just leave it like that. So, so I'm sure people online in here can guess who the two speakers are if you've been watching us for a long time. But likewise with God's two speakers, two witnesses when he gives these dead giveaways. You see that? So that's how you can figure it out. Now, let me ask you this. Who are the two witnesses when you can look at these descriptions? You see one where it shuts up rain in the heavens, called on fire from heaven upon the enemies. Which particular person did that? That's Elijah, right? Yep. Elijah did that. You'll notice at uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, he called down fire from heaven upon the enemies. And then the book of 1 Kings chapter 17 or 16 or 18, Elijah shut up rain in the heavens for several years. Moses is another one you can guess turning water into blood. But it also says what? Plagues. Man are all plagues. So that's a dead giveaway with Moses. But here's another interesting thing why we can guess it's definitely Moses and Elijah. These are the two people who God took up. The two people God took up. Let's look at 2 Kings 2 and Deuteronomy. Uh, Jude, excuse me, Jude. We're going to look at 2 Kings 2 and the book of Jude. What chapter in Jude, Pastor? Uh, don't, don't ask that question. You'd be embarrassed. Shows you don't know much Bible then. <laughs> There's no chapter in Jude, just one. That's why. <laughs> All right, 2 Kings. 2 Kings 1 and the book, uh, excuse me, did I say 2 Kings 2? 2, 2 and Jude, the book of Jude, please. Now notice these are the two people that God took with him that God took with him, the only two out of the whole Bible. So it shows that these two people are very important people to God. Why? Because he's going to use them again. He's going to use their bodies again 
for the tribulation. See, like I said in Kings chapter 2. And then we will read verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. See, he got raptured. Now look at the book of Jude. Jude. Notice that Moses' body did not stay on the earth. When he died, the Lord took it. Look at the book of Jude. And notice in verse 9, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the what? Body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Why? Because the Lord's taking the body. But that's why if you read the book of Deuteronomy, which we won't turn to, it said the Lord buried him there, so to speak. And also that people can't find it. So once the Lord did his burial with uh, Moses, Michael, the archangel, he took it up with him. So you can't find it. That's why Moses and Elijah can come down at the tribulation seat, because the Lord did something with their bodies. See, unlike other Old Testament saints. Now the question is, what about Enoch, right? Wasn't Enoch raptured? Mm -hmm. Enoch is not a type for the tribulation. Enoch is a type of the church. Amen. That's why you have to be pre-tribulation rapture. You see that? So that's why there's a significant point with Moses and Elijah. Because the Lord's trying to show that this person does not have to go, have to go through the tribulation. This person does not have to die by the Antichrist. But these two people, they're from Israel. They have to die. And they have a big play for the enemies of the Lord during the tribulation. But the church has no play in that in the tribulation. All we're focusing, focusing on is not conspiracies, how to fight the government and Antichrist. All we're focused on is walking with God. And because of our walk with God, go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. See, this is a very strong point for pre-tribulation rapture. See. Because we definitely, if you look at the two witnesses, there's no doubt that there's a separate role for Jews in the tribulation, and the church is not in the tribulation. The church has to be raptured up to heaven, whereas Israel, Jews, aren't these two Jews? But Enoch is not a Jew, see? E uh, Jews did not exist during Enoch's timetable. So this group has to be out, whereas Jews, they're in the tribulation. This is a strong point for pre-tribulation rapture, see? Okay, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11. Well, you know, why can't you say Enoch will be the second one to be in the tribulation? Because of his testimony that he pleased God, the Lord's promise upon him was that he would not die, see? He would not die. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not, what, see death, and was not found because God had translated him. If God did not make that promise with Enoch that he would not see death, that's why he raptured him, then it would violate this. Because God had, uh, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he, what, please God. That's his reward for faith. But it would not be a reward for his faith if Enoch had... Enoch dies, see that? So that's why Enoch is definitely not the one in the tribulation. It's perfectly a picture of the church. Moses and Elijah are perfectly pictured for Israel Jews in the tribulation. But what's even more clear is if you look at Malachi 4. Malachi 4. This is convincing proof. Because Moses and Elijah have a play. They have a role in the tribulation. God made a promise at the last book of his Old Testament. Go to Malachi 4. Malachi 4. And we'll look at verse 4. Now with all these points proving that it's Moses and Elijah in the tribulation, if you're not convinced after that, I really don't know what to say after that. This is really pointed out. All these clues, and, and then this is enough proof point, especially with the typologies right here. Especially that these are the only two the Lord took, which is a different issue 
from this person right here who has a promise. Malachi 4.4, 4, Remember ye the law of who? Moses my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb. But he also says, Behold, I will send you, what? Elijah, before the what? Coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right there, see? At the future time period, God has Moses and Elijah ready for some time. 